kind of like that kid from OKC. He is spectacular. Oh, my God. Shea steps back on the three. On the run. Thunder, man. Che Gilgis is a flat out ball. Che Gilgis Alexander is a star. I really want to be one of the best to ever play, so, like, that's the overall the goal. Kept saying, you know, Kawhi, Shea's going to be a star. But how long? I said, I don't know how long, but he's going to be one. We need to start talking about Shea Gilgis Alexander in a different way. It's not that the way he's been discussed before was necessarily wrong, but now we've got to start getting this right. The two on SGA's back, accurate. Not just because he dominates games below the three-point line, but because he's one of the top two-way players in the NBA. And I'll go a step beyond and just call SGA one of the most complete players in the world. The offensive rise of SGA really began in the 2019-20 season, his first with the Thunder. After a promising rookie year with the Clippers, he joined a transitioning Thunder team along with Chris Paul and actually was the leading scorer on a team headed for near 50 wins, had that whole world shutting down thing not happened. Tonight has been postponed. Then the Thunder traded CP3, leaning into a rebuild centered around SGA's mega upside. And in a season cut short by injury, averaged 23.7 a game on really good efficiency. No one can match your efficiency, your ruthless. He took another offensive step the next season, the logo. The logo. averaging a point more a game while experimenting with some of his offensive game, developing a step back three, then refining and crafting his game to set up last season where he broke through with 31.4 points a game on 51, 35, 90 shooting splits and the first team all NBA selection where he led the league in total 30 point games. He makes a lot of very sound points. <laughs> One thing to know about SGA, you can probably see the trend here too, and it extends all the way back to middle school for him. He is addicted to improvement. He finds something to get better at every season. He even does things like take up new sports like tennis because he's absolutely obsessed by the feeling of development. He's told me before one of his favorite things is sucking at something because that just means you can get that intoxicating rush of getting better at it. Strong take to the tip of the left hand. That was his approach in refining his jumper a couple summers ago, breaking it down to the studs and then smoothing out the mechanics to become one of the best mid-range shooters in the world. He said before, the offseason is kind of his favorite part of the NBA season because that's when he can dive deep into the craft and really hone his game. And even with the elevation to one of the best scores in the game, with a bag deeper than Mary Poppins, you might think he'd be satisfied with that side. But he's still finding new things to develop. He's still relentlessly reps his step back three in practice settings for that moment that he's going to need to lean on it again. Back three. Oh, yes. He's working on breaking double teams and traps that opposing teams are now throwing at him on a nightly basis. And he's just consistently hammering away at every move, counter move, counter to the counter move to keep getting better. SGA is a modern throwback, a pure ethical hooper. If there was something that's taken a noticeable leap for SGA this season, at least to the common eye, it's been on the other end. Now, before we dive into SGA's defense, keep in mind, he's always been a really good defender. At Kentucky, that's how he got on the floor in the first place, with his lengthy frame and good instincts. With the Clippers as a rookie, it's why he was starting in the postseason, matched up against Steph Curry. Gilgis Alexander comes And with the Thunder, it's why OKC was able to play a three-point guard lineup successfully because of SGA's underrated defensive versatility, where he can guard small forwards. SGA has always been a very good defensive player, but where the leap seems to have come is the nightly consistency to do it at an extremely high level. That was a challenge from OKC coaches and to SGA individually to himself last season. And he finished fifth in the league in steals and among guards first in blocks. And among all players was sixth in stocks, which is steals plus blocks. Genius. Which is absurd when you combine that with scoring 30 points a game on the other side. 
But this season, SGA has leveled up again, becoming the best thief in the NBA. He leads the league in steals by a comically wide margin, and as of the moment of me recording this, has had five games of five or more steals. Five! Last season, there were 89 games total with someone having five steals, and the most anyone did it was five themselves. Add in blocks, where he may be the best in the league from the guard position, and again, he's top five in stocks. He just takes it from people. Number one in the league in on-ball steals. His length is the physical tool, but his anticipation and defensive intellect are the batteries that make it run. He leads the league in deflections at almost four a game. He's in the right spot all the time. And just like on the offensive end, he's sneaky, he's slithery, he's crafty, and he's disciplined too. He does it all without fouling at a high rate. It's not just the disruptive stuff either. He's one of the hardest players to score against. He can test the most threes per game and maybe the best indicator. He plays a ton of minutes for one of the best defensive teams in the NBA. And here's just some historical context to this. SGA had a streak earlier this season of 11 straight games with at least 25 points and two steals, putting him alongside Michael Jordan and Allen Iverson as the only players to do that since 1973, 1974, which is when they started tracking steals. Pretty good company to be in. Defense! 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 For good measure, let's also include the off-court elements of leadership, and we'll just call it vibe. Love the vibe yeah, down here. here. The ascension of a player, the natural forces of the league often try to pull you away from your team. More attention, more individual recognition, more money, more everything. But as SGA is with everything, he's intentional and aware of those forces. There's a gravity that pulls great players away from the team that's just a natural force in the NBA. And if you want to be a part of the team, it has to be intentional when you're on his level. And to his credit, he's intentional and he plugs back in every single day. I really like my teammates. I'm like genuinely, like I got it. The group of guys is a special group of guys, but I enjoy being around them. And then I, I prioritize winning and you can't win alone. I need every one of those guys to get done what I want to get done. And one of the things he's realized as he's matured in the league is to get those individual things, you have to bring the team with you. I think what I figured out, and it's taken me a little bit, what I think it takes most young guys a little bit to figure out is none of that stuff matter, matters without your team. Um, and I know it sounds cliche, but I've, for the past couple of years now, thought I've been a bit, pretty good basketball player. And I, I can remember a lot of games this year where we won as a team and you can see it in our record, and all that stuff just happens to follow the year that we're a better team. I, mean, I don't think it's a coincidence, I think, to get stuff done individually and as a team, it takes, it takes a whole group. In his sixth season, SGA is a legitimate MVP candidate and one of the absolute, undisputed best players in the world. And he's still just 25 years old, in his very early prime. His best seasons are still ahead of him especially with that year-by-year -year stacking of holistic improvements. Shot it time. Shea on the step back, nails another three. Look, I'm not comparing SGA to MJ, but I'm just gonna note, Shea has a similar kind of game, especially in that six foot six, two-way guard kind of way. Below the three-point line, mid-range pull-ups, clear feel for the clutch, but don't overlook the other end. Jordan was obviously Obviously, an offensive monster. But he also made all defense nine times and won a Defensive Player of the Year award. And a lot of those accolades came even before he started winning championships. Defensive Player of the Year was in 1988. His first all defense came that same year, to which he then made every year until he retired from the Bulls. Again, keep in mind, MJ was 28 years old when he won his first title. SGA is still just 25. So. If you even want to dream of being MJ levels of great, which is what SGA wants, you have to do it on both ends, which is why Shea is two-way. Hey, number two, smile a little bit, man. Just hit a game. <laughs>